What's up guys and welcome back to my F1 2018 Ferrari career mode here today for round number two at the Bahrain Grand Prix and last time out it was a pretty decent result P3 we got our podium and if you're enjoying this series do make sure to leave a like and I'd love to hear how you guys are getting on in your career modes down below let me know and I'll make sure to respond. Before we get out on track then we're going to take a look at some of the off track action that happened between the Australian and Bahrain Grand Prix. So uh, starting off with the debrief, you can see that uh, Carl, uh, one of our engineers, said that he's fairly disappointed and the team are fairly disappointed at how our weekend went in Australia, which is pretty disappointing considering we got a podium on our debut. But that shows just how demanding a Ferrari are, uh, meaning that we're going to have to get on the podium and maybe even improve this weekend if they are to be happy. Um, but also, one of the other things we did off track was some R&D on the aerodynamics department. So we did a quality control upgrade, which should reduce the chance of failure for our aerodynamic components. And we also did our first proper upgrade on the front wing gurney flaps. So that should be arriving with us in China, meaning that in the next round, we will have two upgrades. One to the powertrain, to the ignition system, and a front wing upgrade to the aerodynamics, which, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Some more upgrades to try and keep us on top of the pile and uh, now getting to the on track action you can see that in the second practice session on our qualifying practice run uh, we actually went two tenths quicker than the Mercedes showing that this Ferrari once again is quick this weekend and hopefully we can put it on pole position in qualifying and before we get into qualifying let's see uh, how we get on in our interview good day today tell us about it from your perspective you really went all out in practice today. Are you testing new components? Now, in practice, really, we were just sort of stress testing, uh, you know, seeing what the uh, the components are like when we're, when we're doing it at race pace. You were flying in practice. Do you think you can carry this over to qualifying? You know what? I'm pretty confident about qualifying, so we're going to go for the bottom one. Uh, yeah, you'll see something special. Hopefully that helps our showmanship a bit. Appreciate your time. Cars are ready, the drivers are ready. We hope you're ready as qualifying is about to begin here in Bahrain. So after breezing through the first two qualifying sessions, we're going to take a full lap on board of our Q3 lap. Uh, let me know down below in the comments as well what you'd like to see regarding qualifying, whether you'd like, uh, what, like to see me do Q1, Q2 and Q3, or just do my fastest lap. So today I've decided to do the fastest lap, and you can see going into turn one, breaking just when the rumble strip starts, and going through uh, the first few corners. The, the back end is a little bit unstable, especially through turn three, so I had to be careful there. And you can see losing a little bit of time currently as we're on the run down to turn four. Just about clipping that inside curb before uh, getting on the power nice and early and running it out uh, as much track as possible. So at the end of sector one, we're about half a tenth down on our previous best time now going down into turn eight again clipping that inside making sure not to get too much wheel spin on exit and i think we just about managed to achieve that and yes we are actually up on our previous best now as we go through the double left hander at turns nine and ten once again traction hard to come by and that's one thing i've really found with this ferrari even though it is a top car and uh, through the corners through the mid speed corners like this one it's feeling really nice but the slow speed ones pretty difficult to get traction these curbs very much deadly on this game but with two tenths up uh, pretty much as we come through the middle sector split a very difficult corner turn 13 is difficult to get the uh, the, the the right turn in but uh, now down towards turn 14 and 15 still two tenths up and uh, breaking just at the 100 meter board there straightening the car up not getting on the exit curbs to try and get as much traction as possible and we lose ers there in the final few uh, sort of tenths of a second in uh, in qualifying but it's still enough to get us into p2 we can definitely do something in the race from there and we take a look now at the full grid for this Bahrain Grand Prix and it's Lewis Hamilton who is nearly three tenths ahead of us but uh, we're nearly a tenth of a second ahead of our teammate Vettel who lines up alongside Ricardo Bottas and Alonso with an impressive qualifying there followed by the two Renaults the two Hasses and uh, then we go to Stoffel van Dorn, Brendan Hartley, Perez, Gasly, Verstappen with a penalty, Ocon as well with a disappointing qualifying down in 16th place, and Sorokin and Ericsson round out the grid. There's something in the Bahrain air tonight, and I'm not just talking about the sand. Our brightest minds have thrust their brightest ideas into the spotlight of the Sakia circuit this evening as we look ahead once more to a Grand Prix that has thrilled us so consistently in the past. 
Right then, it is time for the second race of the season here in Bahrain. As we take a look and the bottom right at the Drivers' Championship, that is of course the same as the results from the first round of the season. And it's our teammate Sebastian Vettel, of course, who took victory last time out. And uh, he is in fact behind us for this race, so that's boding well for ourselves. And uh, of course, Valtteri Bottas there in second place. Ricardo and Alonso as well with good races. Uh, Hamilton will be looking, of course, to get his first points of the season. He's starting from pole position. We are directly behind him and we are now at the five red lights and we are away here in Bahrain. It's not a great start from us. Hamilton gets a half decent start, but a great start from our teammate Sebastian Vettel, who could be leading in to turn one. He started in third and he's now side by side with Lewis Hamilton and he has taken the lead of this race. Hamilton gets a poor exit off the first couple of corners, meaning we have got got the chance to go down his inside now will we be able to make it stick down in to turn four I think we have but we've run deep into there so he's gonna cut underneath us and back up into second Fernando Alonso with a brilliant start up into fourth of course Alonso traditionally a good starter in F1 races in real life and he's done exactly the same here so it's Vessel from Hamilton from ourselves and then Alonso and Ricardo are just behind so uh, there you can see Daniel Ricardo uh, he's not actually that close to Fernando Alonso but Alonso will struggle on the straights you'd imagine and uh, well sure enough come the end of lap one start of lap two Alonso just doesn't have the uh, the straight line speed to stay ahead of Daniel Ricciardo and the Red Bull man breezes up in at 2p2 Alonso put up a good fight but uh, yeah just does not have that straight line speed it really is dreadful in this game for the McLaren but uh, as for ourselves, we were keeping pace with Lewis Hamilton. Uh, Hamilton, in fact, falling falling quite a way behind um, Sebastian Vettel, who probably has about a two-second, two-and-a-half-second lead at this point on lap three. But we're still within DRS range of Hamilton, just trying to stick with him until the first pit stops, which will probably happen around lap five or six, you'd imagine. So, uh, yeah, at the end of lap three, still staying within that DRS range of Hamilton, the, the back straight between turns 10 and 11 isn't really a good opportunity to overtake, whereas this on the pit straight really is a great chance. We're in overtake mode on our ERS deployment, and we go down the inside of Lewis Hamilton up into P2. Uh, he's... Pretty good under the brakes, but not good enough. We just squeeze him out, make sure he won't get back past us through turns two and three. And sure enough, we are up into P2 in this race behind our teammates. And now our uh, our job is to try and pursue Sebastian Vettel and take victory because uh, otherwise it's going to look like we are very much a number two driver this season. And, uh, well, Vettel, if it stays like this, will be on a maximum 50 points from the first two races. Of course, it is still early days. And sure enough, come lap four, very early stop for uh, Sebastian Vettel. Who knows, maybe he'll come out in a bit of traffic. But uh, our occupation is uh, now switched to Lewis Hamilton, who's gone down our inside at the start of lap five and parks it on the apex of turn one. And is he going to get a good drive out through this corner as we go to high ERS? But uh, even on lap five, we still don't have a great deal of battery left. So we're going to have to conserve that for the final 10 laps of the race. And Hamilton stays ahead for the meantime. We're just going to have to uh, stay behind him. Maybe not battle too much or else Vettel will really get a massive lead. Uh, the last thing you want to do when you're pursuing someone is battle them. So, uh, yeah. Uh, we're behind Lewis Hamilton as we come into the pits, probably slowing down a little bit too early. But uh, hopefully we can get a good turnaround from our Ferrari mechanics and back out into the race. Not too far behind uh, Sebastian Vettel, but we're held up in the pits there. Uh, the guys got, us, uh, got the tyres changed pretty quickly, but we were held up, I think, by Lewis Hamilton being released. But still, I'm not sure why we're so far behind him. So a little bit disappointing there. Uh, I think Hamilton, yes, he's definitely gained on us there. And you can see Vettel quite away in the distance. He's uh, just got head of Sergei Sorokin, I believe. Um, but yeah, Hamilton probably a good three seconds ahead, meaning that the victory is going to be very, very hard to come by. Now, Daniel Ricciardo has well gained on us in that pit phase. He's right behind, as there's quite a few cars in the pit lane now. And yes, Sergei Sorokin is 3.8 ahead of us, meaning that Lewis Hamilton is at least four seconds ahead. So he's gained a good two or three seconds in that pit phase, which is far from ideal. 
bit here. Now you can see Hamilton and Vettel stuck behind one of the Force Indias. I believe it is Esteban Ocon. I could be wrong. Yes, it is indeed Ocon. But uh, anyway, Sebastian Vettel has dispatched of him pretty easily. Um before the uh, the penultimate, sorry, the final corner of the racetrack. So uh, all of them dive into the pit lane, which unleashes both Hamilton and uh, and Vettel now. Hamilton really has gained on the Ferrari. Man, the traffic has not helped our teammate there. And uh, there, it's going to be a real ding-dong battle between Hamilton and Vettel in the final six laps of this race. So uh, starting lap nine now, we've got a car in the pit lane. I believe that is Max Verstappen who started on the soft compound of tyre. So there's no more cars in front to pit now. It is just going to be a straight race on these final five laps of the race. And Lewis Hamilton has finally plucked up the courage to go for a move on Sebastian Vettel. And that looks pretty easy. He got it done even before the braking zone into turn one. And Ricardo as well is going for a move on ourselves. It's not a good few corners for the Ferrari drivers. And Ricardo has just about squeezed us out through the first few turns. We should have the pace on that Renault engine to get ahead of him into uh, turn four. So we go down his inside, but Ricardo breaks late and there's a little bit of contact there, which is not ideal for ourselves. Uh, but we should uh, now get a good run on him through here. We can't panic through these final five laps. Though. The worst thing we need to do is dive down his inside, but that is exactly what we're going to do. And uh, fortunately enough, Ricardo has left us room, but knowing the AI on this game, that could have ended a lot differently. Uh, but yeah, we're still just stuck behind him. Um, but we should have the pace on that Renault engine, you'd like to think, on this straight. So we go into overtake mode. We still do have a bit of ERS to use on these final four and a half laps. But Ricardo very, very slow. And uh, we actually get the switch back on him. So we break early, get a brilliant exit off turn 11. And that means that we are back up into P3 ahead of Daniel Ricciardo. But something's going to tell me that that is not the last we'll see of that battle. Back up at the front and uh, Vettel is going back for a move on Hamilton. He is really not giving up without a fight as they go through turn two. He just gets squeezed out. And uh, as that is going on, you can see ourselves and Daniel Ricciardo still going at it. Ricciardo gets past us at the start of lap 12. So, well... He seems to have the pace on us on that pit straight with DRS. And the same with Sebastian Vettel on Lewis Hamilton. But Hamilton putting up a valiant fight. But Vettel sweeps round his outside. And Hamilton is completely helpless in this situation. And the same goes for Daniel Ricciardo. The difference between that Ferrari and Renault engine is scary. We get the move done on the pit straight. No need to do it on the brakes nice and easily. But now as we go on it to where, uh, well, just about to start the final lap of the Grand Prix, Lewis Hamilton has a brilliant run on Vettel now. And it looks as if he's going to get past it. Look, it looks as if this battle for the lead was really a game of tactics as to who was going to get ahead with just one lap left. And it is Lewis Hamilton who's managed to do it. Meanwhile, just behind, we have fended off the attack from Daniel Ricciardo. We uh, used all the ERS that we had on that straight, and it seems to have worked, because I don't think there's going to be another overtaking opportunity. And sure enough, Lewis Hamilton has fended off the challenge from Sebastian Vettel to take victory in the desert. It's a win for Mercedes, a win for Hamilton. Vettel tried his hardest, and the same, I think, is going to go for Daniel Ricciardo. They tried and they tried, but it wasn't quite enough. And we come home for our second podium of the season. It's another third place. Slightly disappointing not to have got any higher up, but I think realistically that was as good as we could have hoped for. And wow, what a victory it was from Lewis Hamilton. He fought and fought and fought, and what a battle it was between the front two and also myself and Ricciardo. And that is how the podium is looking. It's one Mercedes and two Ferraris, but the one Mercedes man is the guy at, on the top step. And that's all that matters, really. So, uh, yeah, it's a great, great win for Lewis Hamilton. His first points of the season, of course, he had his engine cut out on him and uh, pretty much snatched the podium away. Uh, in the first race in Australia. So you can't really argue with a victory for him here. And uh, now we're going to take a look at the full race results. So we lose one position to Sebastian Vettel. And uh, the rest of the, uh, the the top five actually finished in their starting positions. Uh, Max Verstappen, very disappointing race for him. Obviously uh, had to take an engine penalty. Hence he only finished in P9. And Bottas 
stayed in P5, so that was interesting. Uh, meanwhile, Fernando Alonso, he had such a great start to the race, but he did not even end up finishing that McLaren, showing once again its poor reliability. And going on to the driver's standings now, uh, Vettel, of course, leading the way on 43 points. So he's a good... Uh, yeah, he, he, sorry, yeah, 43 points. So he's 13 points ahead of ourselves, with Bottas in third and Hamilton climbing all the way up to fourth with his victory, of course. But uh, it's still... Ferrari on top of the constructors' standings. I'm sure that will ebb and flow as the season goes on between Ferrari, Mercedes and Red Bull. But now we're going to get into the interview after the race. Good day today. Tell us about it from your perspective. You must be thrilled to be up on the podium. Yeah, you know, I'm thrilled to be up there for the second time, but I'm not sure whether the team will be the same. So we're going to try and get on their good side and say the team have put a lot of faith in me. You had a close battle today, didn't you? I mean, we didn't, but, you know. We'll say that we've been pushing each other to be the best drivers we can be, because I think that'll get on Vettel's good side as well. Did you have the wrong fuel strategy today, or was it your management? Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't really notice anything. Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> I don't think that this is going to go down well with the team, but, uh, yeah, I miscalculated, maybe. Appreciate your time. So that is just about it for the Bahrain Grand Prix. Not a terrible race, but not a great one either. Once again, finishing behind our teammate. But hopefully we can put that right in the next race, which will be in China. And uh, make sure to join me then. It should be out tomorrow. Leave a like if you've enjoyed this one. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.